I want a powerful anointing from God on my life. I hunger for an anointing like Elijah had in the Bible. But who was Elijah? And what was that anointing all about? I mean, it is he's a mysterious character, and, and the anointing on his life was very unique. But how does an anointing even work in your life? Well, I'm going to be talking about that today. So open your Bible up to James chapter 5, verse 17 through 20. And I'm going to be reading today in, from that passage in the New American Standard Bible. So go ahead and get your Bible open to that. I'll leave it here on the screen here for just a few long, uh, minutes longer so that you can go ahead and, and get it uh, looked up in your Bible. And you see, every success story has a backstory that's quite often seldom explained. But in the scriptures, uh, we, we tend to read these stories and we like to focus on the high points of the narratives. But what about the backstories of these, uh, these individuals and these people regarding spiritual development and difficulties and the building of spiritual muscle and the receiving of an anointing from God and how and why that happens? Well, we're looking at Elijah. And Elijah was an amazing man with this powerful God anointing on his life. It's marked by faith and fire, but there is also a backstory. And if you, like me, desire an anointing of fiery faith, you're going to be blessed to see how you can be emboldened by the Holy Spirit as God fashions you for his purposes. So we're going to discover what the Elijah anointing is and how we can flow in that anointing today. Now, if, if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to this channel so more people can see this Bible study and grow in their faith during these troubled times. Also, please leave some comments. I love to read your comments, and, uh, and I'll, I'll be sure and respond to those as well. well. Let's go ahead and dive into today's teaching entitled, The Hunger for the Elijah Anointing. Now, Elijah was a man who walked in this powerful anointing of God. He was a man of fiery faith. We see the narrative of his life found in the Bible in uh, beginning in 1 Kings chapter number 17, and it ends up uh, in 2 Kings chapter number 2. And in this narrative, there are all types of uh, little mini stories and snippets. One is the three and a half year famine that he, he asked God for. He spoke over the land and it was to judge the land because of King Ahab and Queen Jezebel's idolatry. There's the uh, miraculous provision for the widow at Zarephath and then raising her son back to life. There was the showdown at Mount Carmel with the prophets and priests of Baal. Uh, it's also of him being fed by the ravens in the wilderness, hearing the voice of God at Mount Horeb, which is also known as Mount Sinai. His boldness to rebuke the king, King Ahab, for stealing Naboth's vineyard and his, and his wife who had him killed, <laughs> calling fire down from heaven to consume a hundred of God's enemies. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in this series. But also uh, his prophecies of God's judgments on the, and really the deaths of several kings as a result of their own iniquity. His departure from this earth in a chariot of fire. His conversation with Jesus and Moses on the mountain. And, and it's also even my belief that he will be one of the two witnesses in the future, near the very end of the Great Tribulation, who, uh, who will preach and work miracles and call down fire from heaven in Revelation chapter 11. So, and really so much more. But, but Elijah is spoken about throughout the Bible definitely outside of this narrative. And I encourage you to read the narrative from First and Second Kings, but there's a lot of other things about him. And I want to start off with this key scripture, which is going to carry us through this series. And it's found in James chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. And again, I'm using the New American Standard Bible. Let's look at this. It says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And that is probably one of the most important things I can draw your attention to right now because Elijah was not some super character. He wasn't like this Batman or Superman or anything like that. He was a normal man. He had a nature like yours. Yeah, and like mine. So that gives us hope that the anointing that was on Elijah can be an anointing that we can have in our lives as well. So that's why I call this a hunger for the Elijah anointing. 
But Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, back to the scripture, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. He prayed again, and the sky poured rain, and the earth produced its fruit. My brothers and sisters, if any of you, this is, this is important, if anyone among you strays from the truth and someone turns him back, which is what Elijah did, uh, he brought people back, let him know that the one that the one who has turned a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. A lot of people don't put those two scriptures together, but they fit together because they go together and it speaks of the Elijah anointing. So I want you to develop a hunger for this. And my hope that is, is wherever you are in your walk with God, that you will at least have a hunger for more of God's anointing in your life and a hunger for, for the Elijah anointing. Well, a big question that you might ask is, well, what is an anointing? Well, my, my definition of anointing is this. Uh, an anointing or the anointing is God's supernatural power that comes on you through the Holy Spirit of God to transform you and to empower you for service. That's for the service of the kingdom. Now, from his narrative in First and Second Kings and other scriptures that we find in the New Testament, we can get a much better understanding of this Elijah anointing. In fact, one of the unique things about the Elijah anointing is there was an individual at the beginning of the New Testament who came in the spirit of Elijah. In other words, he came in the Elijah anointing, and that man is John the Baptist. And so we do have some scriptures that are about him, which helps us to understand the Elijah anointing even more. So let's take a look at them. First of all, this it's it's prophesied at the very end of the last chapter. It's the very, very end of the last chapter in of the last book in the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 through 6. And, uh, and, and I want you to hear this first because this, along with these two other scriptures I'm going to share with you, t tell us a lot about what this Elijah anointing is about and how it works, how it worked through the life of John the Baptist and how it can work in our lives as well. So Malachi chapter 4 verses 5 and 6 says, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. He will turn... That word turn is goes right in hand in hand with the word repentance. So it's a shifting, it's a change, it's a it's a it's a complete 180 from where you were going. So he will turn the hearts of fathers back to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, so that I will not come and strike the land with complete destruction. We'll go more into these scriptures as we go into this series, but I want to touch on all of these because uh, we're going to define what the Elijah anointing looks like here in just a second. Okay, here is the second one. This is found in the book of Luke in the New Testament, Luke chapter 1. Uh, this is verses 16 and 17. This says that uh, he will turn many of the sons of Israel back to the Lord their God. And it is he who will go as a forerunner before him, which is before Jesus, in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to their children and the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. A lot of keys to what the Elijah anointing looks like from that passage of scripture, again, about John the Baptist who operated in this anointing. And, and a third one is found in Luke chapter number three, verses four through six. Let's take a look at this. It says, the voice of one calling out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every ravine will be filled and every mountain and hill will be lowered. The crooked will become straight and the rough roads smooth and all flesh will see the salvation of God. Now, these, uh, these scriptures give us a lot of insight into what I call the Elijah anointing. And through my studies uh, preparing for this series, I've, I've come up with a, a six-part definition for the Elijah anointing. And I want to share that with you now. I want to share that with you through this series because when I say I want to have a hunger, and I, and I hope you will have a hunger for the Elijah anointing, here is specifically what I'm talking about. First of all, the Elijah anointing is, is about repentance and faith 
in Jesus. It's about turning a life around and having total faith in Jesus. Second, the Elijah anointing is about the restoration of what I would call quality fatherhood in the home. And it's about men rising up to be men of God in their homes and, uh, and, and, and loving their, their children, loving their families, and, and, and raising their families to do the right things. Okay, a third thing, a third element of the Elijah anointing also speaks about this. It's about a restoration of honors, uh, excuse me, of honor for fathers in the home. So it's where children begin to have honor for their fathers again in the home, which which completes this unit because the home is a powerful, powerful tool for God's work and, and God's restoration. The fourth quality of the Elijah anointing is a transformation of the disobedient to righteousness. And the fifth element is this. It's a preparation of people for the return of the Lord. And the sixth element of the Elijah anointing is this. It is a miraculous demonstration of God's power to bring people to repentance, which is the reason for the, the, the miraculous demonstrations of God's power. Now, I want you just to imagine... What would it be like if Elijah were just sitting with you right now, right beside you? What questions would you ask him? What questions would you ask him about uh, his memories of his life and his ministry? Well, as I think through the conversation that I would like to have with Elijah, I try to picture how he might interact and engage with me. I'm just a little old Tim Woody. But how would Elijah talk to me? And to be honest with you, I, I'm sure I would be zeroed in on the spectacular moments of the story of Elijah, the narrative of Elijah, which I explained at the beginning of, of today's episode. But I wonder if Elijah would kind of intentionally point to some other things, things that are more simple, more foundational, uh, even some of the difficult things that he went through that kind of made up the, uh, uh, the, the underbelly of his journey with God. I wonder if uh, Elijah would want to discuss those quieter happenings from earlier in his life, like the things that you even read in the passages preceding his first big event in 1 Kings chapter 18. Uh, what about the parts of the story that are filled with refining and pruning and, and the releasing of God's anointing on him? Again, I love that story of the showdown at Mount Carmel with the priests and the prophets of Baal. That's one of my favorite narratives of the Old Testament. But what led Elijah up to that point? Uh, and to be honest with you, it, it was definitely a much less public process that God had begun in him years earlier. It's a process that's already happening in you and in me as well. Remember, Elijah was a man with a nature just like us. And it's a process that your all-powerful and ever-loving Heavenly Father will continue to develop throughout the this Bible study of the Elijah anointing. I'm believing God for that as we go through this, this series. My prayer for this series and, and for today as well is that you're going to begin to recognize the value of the process that God is taking you through more than ever before as you receive a more powerful anointing in your life. You see, when God dropped it into my heart to study some of the uh, teachings regarding uh, this Elijah anointing and, and studying the scriptures on this, my, my heart began to leap. And it was a few months ago when God dropped this in my heart and I began my studies and began going through this. And I felt, yes, this is something that I really need to, to present through Tim at 12 on a Bible study. Because I, what I saw in the scriptures, I, I saw that I, I want what Elijah had. And I can only assume that you do as well, or you've probably already would have already turned me off at this point. I, I want an Elijah anointing of fiery faith. But I've come to understand this is that you and I, we must be willing to do what Elijah did to have what Elijah had. Now I have no idea uh, how how you might be in your where you might be in your current situation or or anything like that but but i 
I kind of wish I could just sit down with every one of you face to face and show you my heart and let you kind of even feel the hunger that's in me for a powerful anointing in my life like Elijah's. Uh, and then I would love it if you were able just to open up your heart and share the same because I think that eager expectation is really the first step toward being positioned to receive and to walk in an Elijah anointing. And I believe that God is calling me and hopefully you to move to the next level and to overcome your fears and to overcome your apprehensions and misunderstandings that, that may have prevented you from even moving forward in a more powerful release of God's anointing in your life. And, and, and that you will begin to allow God to refine you, to a, empower you, and to anoint you to operate in an Elijah anointing. Again, what is the Elijah anointing? Let's look at this. It is about repentance and faith in Jesus. It's about a restoration of quality fatherhood in the home. It's about a restoration of honor for fathers in the home. It's about transformation of the disobedient to righteousness. It's about a preparation of people to, re to, to be ready for the return of the Lord. And it's about miraculous demonstration of God's power for a purpose, and that is to bring people to repentance. And remember this, Elijah was a man with a nature just like ours. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. Then he prayed again, and the sky poured rain, and the earth produced its fruits. Listen to what he says here. James says, my brothers and sisters, if any of you strays from the truth and someone turns him back, in a sense like Elijah did, let him know that the one who has turned a sinner from the error of his way, which I hope will be you and me as well, that person will save a person's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. That's what God desires to do through us. And it can happen with this Elijah anointing. So may the desire of our hearts be to have the Elijah anointing of fiery faith that turns sinners from the error of their ways and saving their souls from death and covering a multitude of sins. I don't want to pray for you right now. God, I pray for every person who's listening to this message today about developing a hunger in our hearts for an Elijah anointing. God, let that hunger just continue to grow and to increase and help us, God, to take the right steps and to prepare our own hearts so that we can uh, be be understanding and respectful of what you're doing in our lives so that we can operate in a powerful anointing that's going to do these things that we talked about today. Lord, may the Elijah anointing rest in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this introduction to this series on the Elijah anointing, and I can't wait to get into the details of this in the weeks ahead. So continue to, to, uh, to follow along. Put a reminder on your calendar to tune into Tim at 12 on Wednesdays at noon, or you can go back and catch the, the episodes as they've already played out because we do present all of those to you uh, on demand as well after they've been presented. So thank you again for joining me for Tim at 12 today, and my prayer is that this has helped you to grow. It's educated you and encouraged you and, and built your faith and challenged you to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world in a decadent culture. God bless you.